All carols and decorations and everything are being taken down, and the church says, I don't move quite that fast. <laughs> the church basically says, you know, this Christmas event is just so marvelous. Uh, let's take a few days and celebrate it. Uh, fact, tradition is we celebrate Christmas for 12 days. Uh, and so we're going to continue on with the, uh, with, the, with the celebration of Christmas and just that great proclamation uh, that Christ is born amongst us. Thank you to everyone who helped out with the Advent and Christmas. Uh, it has been a marvelous season. It has been a busy season. Uh, lots of help. We appreciate everyone who's, uh, who's been involved with that. It's also been a busy weekend here around the church. Uh, we had a baptism yesterday for Emilio Marlo. Uh, that was yesterday afternoon. And then last night, as many of you know, we had a wedding uh, for Kimberly and Ken Butler. And so please keep Kimberly and Ken and Emilio in your prayers. Uh, special events and a special time of year. Finally, next Sunday, we go back to our regular schedule. And so next Sunday, worship will be at 9.15 uh, and 11.10. Uh, and Sunday school for all ages will also resume again, and that will be at 9, at, excuse me, 10, 50. So a full, uh, full regular schedule uh, next Sunday. Well, with that said, let's continue on with the Christmas celebration. Would you please stand as we sing together, good Christian friends, rejoice. <laughs>
our nature and be born of the Virgin Mary. Grant that we, having been redeemed and made your children by grace, may daily be renewed through your Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite the other members of the congregation to join me at the front uh, as we share our children's children with them.
you would speak your word, shape us as your own, and help us to grow deeper in you. Be with us, Lord Jesus, for in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I thought for our sermon this morning we would do a little tour through the Bible. And specifically what I want to do is look at what each of the four Gospels tells us about the story of the birth of Jesus. Each of the Gospels tells us something different about the coming of Christ. And so I thought on this first Sunday after Christmas, it would be fun to see what each of the Gospels has to say. So what I'm going to do is go through the Gospels one at a time. I'll read the Christmas story from each Gospel, and then we'll talk a bit about what it said. Let's start with the Gospel of Mark. Now, Mark is the first Gospel to be written. And when you look at Mark, you will immediately find something strange. And that is, there is no Christmas story. There is no Christmas story. Mark doesn't tell us a thing about Jesus' birth. Mark rather starts his account with the preaching of John the Baptist and with the baptism of Jesus. No account of anything of Jesus until he's age 30. Absolutely no mention of Christmas in Mark's Gospel. Now, people have wondered over the centuries why Mark doesn't mention Christmas, and of course we don't know. The best theory is that the early Christians were an Easter people. What formed the church, what was the focus for the early church, was the death and resurrection of Christ. And so Mark, being the earliest gospel, really pays no attention to Christmas and focuses all his attention on Good Friday and Easter. So, we start our survey by pointing out that Mark doesn't tell us anything about Christmas. But the other Gospels have a lot to say. Let's move next to Luke. In Luke, oh, actually, I'm going to have this run. Let me do. There we go. Let's move next to Luke. In Luke, we find a rich, rich story. It is in Luke that we find that marvelous story that we read every Christmas Eve. Let me read for you Luke's account of that first Christmas. This is from Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be in Rome. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In that region there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel the multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those who be When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. In all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. That's Luke's account. It's interesting. If you go back into the original Greek and read Luke's account, it is simply a beautiful, magnificently written story. It is some of the most beautiful language in the entire New Testament. Luke presents us with this marvelous picture of Jesus' birth. And notice what Luke tells us. Luke centers on Mary and the angels and the shepherds. Luke makes only passing reference to Joseph. And he never refers to the wise men. What Luke wants us to know is that Jesus has come in the full glory of God. 
but that glory is now meant for all people, and especially the common people of the earth. Jesus in Luke's gospel is surrounded by common, ordinary people. His mother is Mary. She is a simple young girl. She has no claim to fame except that she is obedient to God. And notice the first people to hear of Jesus' birth. Are they royalty? No. Religious leaders? No. They're shepherds. Shepherds. Common, ordinary people. It is to simple shepherds that the announcement first comes. What Luke wants us to know is that Jesus has come for all people, and especially the common people of the earth. In Jesus resides all the glory of God, but this glory is meant for all of us. It is meant for Mary, for shepherds, and yes, for you and I. The wonder of Christmas is that the Christ child is coming for all. Well, that's Luke's account. Let's move now from Luke into Matthew. And see what Matthew tells us at Christmas. Let me read for you Matthew's account. And this is from Matthew 1.18 through 2.12. Matthew writes, Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Jesus awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. <coughs> in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star and its rising, we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them what exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me words, so that I also may go and worship him. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that was in the rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw where the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. That's Matthew's account. Did you notice? Luke focuses in on Mary and the shepherds. Matthew directs us to Joseph and the wise men. Matthew doesn't even mention the shepherds. He wants us to know about these wise men from the east. And it's only as you take Matthew and Luke together that you get our full Christmas story. Matthew tells us of Joseph, who is a great example of faith. Joseph's faith really is remarkable. His fiance comes up pregnant, and in a dream, an angel tells Joseph that the child will be the Savior. One of the great miracles of Christmas is that Joseph believes all of this. He dares to live with faith in God. He cares for Mary. He protects Jesus. Joseph becomes a great example of faith. And so Matthew tells us about Joseph, and of course it's Matthew who tells us about the wise men. The wise men. These mysterious visitors from the east who seek the newborn king. They follow a star, they come to worship Christ. And what the wise men tell us, I think, is that Jesus has come for all nations. Jesus is not just for the Jewish people. He is for the Jews to be sure, but he's for all nations. 
And so Matthew records for us this beautiful story of wise men, these foreigners who were among the first to worship the Christ child. So, for Matthew, Jesus is king, king for all nations, and he is to be followed in a faithfulness like unto Joseph. Matthew, Mark, Luke, that leaves us with one gospel to go, and that's John. John has some fascinating things to tell us about Jesus' coming. Different from Matthew and Luke. But John's account, too, is important. <coughs> Let me read for you from, from John, the first chapter, uh, verses 1 through 8. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him was not one thing coming to being. What is coming to being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not overcome. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. It is fascinating to me to read John. John wants to tell us what Christmas means. Matthew and Luke, they tell us the Christmas story, what actually happened. John wants to tell us what Jesus' coming means. And according to John, what does Jesus' coming mean? It means that the light of God is now broken forth in human darkness. Jesus, the Word of God, the Son of God, the Light of God, has entered this world and dwells among us. In Jesus, God's light shines. He is the true light in the midst of darkness. He is the light that shows us the way from death to life. In Jesus, we meet the glory of God. It is a marvelous account that John shares. He tells us the meaning of Jesus. And the meaning is that God has come into the midst of our broken world. So, to conclude, as we look at the different Gospels, we find very different accounts of Christmas. It's almost like, it's almost like the wonder of Christmas was too great to be put into any one writing. And so God in his wisdom gives us three different accounts. Luke gives us that beautiful story of Mary and angels and shepherds. The glory of God has come for all. Matthew tells us of Joseph and wise men. Matthew calls us to believe in this Christ who is king of all nations. And John. John tells us that Jesus is life for the world. May we keep all of this in our hearts as we continue to share the wonder of Christmas. Amen. Please stand as we sing together our next meal.
God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. And gathered in the joy of promises fulfilled, let us bring our needs and our thanksgivings to God. God of grace, we thank you for the gift of your Son. What a joy, what a privilege to celebrate his presence among us. Thank you for the gift of Christmas. God of grace and peace. God of grace, free those who are in bondage to sin, to addiction, to corruption, or to any evil, the dimming and the power of your incarnation and resurrection. God of grace and peace. God of health. Let all who yearn for healing be restored and strengthened. From our own midst, we remember John Pauly and Frank McManamy and all of hope. We ask that you would give hope to those who are enduring broken relationships or divorce or struggles in their families. And Lord, we rejoice with you, with those going through the blessings of life. We ask that you would be with Emilio and his family and baptism. We ask that you would be with Kimberly and Ken as they celebrate their new married life together. God of grace and peace. God of peace be a work in this world. Work for peace and justice in Iraq, Afghanistan, and in all places of struggle. And with all who serve in places of fighting. God of grace and peace. God of love. Help this congregation to grow deeply into your gifts. Awaken in us firmer faith and lead us onward in ministry and mission. God of grace and peace. Hear all our prayers, gracious God, and receive them in the name of the Word made flesh. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Those around you with the peace of our God.
only Son, so that all those who believe in Him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Christ our Lord. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as He comes to us in His Holy Son. Amen. In the night in which He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you to do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.